Okay, today we're here with the Pentax ME Super, a wonderful little SLR, and we are going to be removing the top plate to do a light meter calibration. Uh, but a lot of servicing you do on this camera, you've got to take the top plate off, so this might be useful uh, for any number of things that you're doing with this camera. So to do this operation, all we need is a little JIS or Phillips head screwdriver. Um, sort of a long, flat, uh, rigid tool for removing the battery compartment and doing a little sort of um, levering, as we'll see. And a nice spanner. I got this one from Japan Hobby Tool, and I will put the link to this in the description. Um, I haven't found a spanner as good off of places like Amazon, and a good spanner will make repairs possible that seem impossible with a bad one. So highly recommend getting uh, one of these or something like it. And you'll also need a set of uh, rubber lens openers like these. Great, so first thing we're gonna do, first step you should do in any repair is remove the battery. So we'll just pop open the battery compartment and take the batteries out. Okay, a couple of LR or SR44s. And now we're ready to remove the top plate. So there are a few things in your way. Uh, go from easiest to hardest. Just got five screws here. One, two, three, four, five screws. So we'll take those out. So the two screws here have kind of a, I don't know if this is going to be visible, they kind of have a long or a deeper head. Um, so you, the screws are not really interchangeable. These two are the same. They're this kind. Um, the one here has kind of like a wide uh, top part. And the two that go into the side have like an even longer sort of head part. Uh, now on the top plate, we've got to remove the winding lever and the ISO dial assembly and the rewind knob. So we'll sort of go right to left and they each require sort of different techniques. So wind lever, take our openers here, I guess I'm using numbers one and two together, and just press them down and turn to loosen this. Uh, the wind lever is actually reverse threaded, which is kind of a gotcha on a lot of cameras like this. So you'll need to turn it to the right as if you're tightening it, and that will loosen it. Great, and that should come out nice and easy. So we've got the top part, and then below that is a metal retaining ring that we'll have to use the spanner to remove. And so we'll just kind of set the size of that. And I, this, let's see, is this also reverse threaded? Yes, so this is also reverse threaded here, and then once you've got that loose, so these both need to turn to the right to loosen them. So that comes off next. I'll just put those over here. And then the lever itself comes off, and below that is um, Tweezers can also help here, and we can zoom in a little more, get a better view of everything. Um, 
remove this sort of sprung ring. And uh, yeah, that's all we need to remove here to reveal the top plate. Good. So, and the last part is the rewind knob and the um, ISO dial. So first we can remove the rewind knob. So to do that, let's you know pull it up to open camera back. And then we, it's simply screwed on to the top of this post, the rewind knob. Um, so we just kind of put, this is what this tool is for, put it into the um, you know part that grabs the film canister to stop it from turning and then just loosen this and it comes off. Great. And don't remove this post because it's, it's really difficult to get back in this yeah, just keep keep the post here. Don't pull it out. You can pull it out this way, uh, but don't leave it in. Great. So now the last little thing we have to do is there's a last retaining ring here, which is holding on the mode or the ISO dial assembly. So set our spanner once again. And I believe this is also normal threaded. Yep, so turn left to loosen that. And nice and easy, not applying any force right now. Yep, so we've got the retaining ring. And you can just lift the whole, and before you lift this, um, set it to something you'll remember, like ISO 100 at just 1x, and because you'll want to put it back in the same way because it mechanically couples to things beneath it. So just pull it straight out gently and put it off to the side and try not to, if you touch this little pin here, you'll have to reset it after. So just kind of leave that. Uh, and removing this dial has revealed one last screw. Great. So now we have removed all the things keeping us from removing the top plate and we can gently pull up just kind of free it yeah great top plate is free and in all likelihood this little chrome piece will pop off of your um, top plate it often does looks like mine is actually stuck but the chrome piece is likely to pop off so just don't lose it um, and you'll need to kind of carefully place it back when you reassemble but yeah that's the top plate, removal. Now we are ready to uh, reassemble this camera. So for those who are interested in doing their own meter calibration, I believe after the testing that I've done, the bottom dial controls the offset of the um, gain circuitry and the top controls the gain where for the bottom dial, um, going on this side moves the offset up and offset in terms of the shutter speed it will choose. So moving the dial this way makes the offset a higher number, which corresponds to a faster shutter and moving it over here makes the offset lower. So thinking about the position of the LED on the left side of the viewfinder that will show up next to the shutter speed, this moves the offset towards higher numbers and this moves the offset towards lower numbers. And for here, the gain moving the dial over here makes the difference between um, low light and large amounts of light greater in terms of the shutter speed that it chooses. And over here, the, um, the difference in shutter speed for different levels of light um, decreases. So the numbers get closer together on the right side and further apart on the left. And generally on the right side, the numbers are all higher. So I guess that means the gain, I'm not sure whether to say it's higher or lower, but it seems to be affecting the, the dynamic range basically of the output. Um, so I found that these were the settings for my camera almost Certainly your camera will require different settings. 
Okay, so it's time to put the top plate back on. So there are a few things to think about in terms of putting the top plate back on. First of all, uh, there's only one piece that you have to worry about falling out, which is this pin here that does the actual shutter release when you have like a cable release. So the pin sits here and usually it won't fall out when you invert it as long as you're gentle. If you tap it, then it will fall out. But if you are gentle with it, it shouldn't fall out and you should be able to place the plate on and that pin will fall in the right spot. So make sure you haven't lost the pin, put the pin in and we can flip it over. You want the mode dial to be set to auto and if this chrome piece doesn't stick to your top plate, then you're gonna to need to kind of position that in the right spot. So gently to keep this pin from falling out, sort of put it over, line up this part so it kind of sticks in like right next to this plastic part of the viewfinder on the body and gently sort of level, press it down. Don't apply any force yet. Now you'll, you have to twist the mode dial back and forth to get everything to line up. So applying some downward pressure, you press in the, the mode dial lock and then turn all the way to B and you hear a click and then back. And now the top plate is secure and the mode dial will work correctly. If you don't do that, it might look like it's on, but the mode dial won't work. So before we put the mode dial on, we have to remember to put this screw back in because once the mode dial is on, we can't access the screw anymore. So we'll go ahead and take that screw, pop it back in, and then we can do our mode dial. And for the advanced lever, so we put on this little sprung ring and then the lever itself. And then this retaining ring, which as we remember is reverse threaded. So we need to turn left to get it started. So tighten this, turning left. And then come in and left tighten this. And last, after our mode dial is on, we can reattach the rewind knob, which you can just kind of lightly turn to get it started. And then you'll need to go in with the tool like before, press it into the kind of notch, and then you can turn it nice and tight. Secure it on. Great. Then we can just do the screws. And that's that.
that is top plate removal and reinstall on the Pentax ME Super, which is now ready to go.